Okay, what I'm showing here is a map of the Scranton area uh, in a program called Earth Vision. <clears throat> this is a program that AppCamera has been using for several years now to uh, show the 3D uh, impacts of mine drainage, not only what's on the surface, but what's below the surface. So I've gone ahead and turned on a transparency of this area just to kind of show uh, what is underneath the ground. and. Um, Basically, there are 11 coal veins that are make up the mine pool underneath the ground in the Scranton area. Um, the mine pool itself, which we refer to as a Scranton Metro mine pool, um, starts in the uh, German area, also where the Archibald Pothole State Park is, and goes all the way underneath the city of Scranton and then discharges in an area known as Old Forge. At the Old Forge board, the volume of this mine pool is approximately 130 billion gallons of water, which is approximately two and a half times the volume of water in Lake Wall and Paul Pack in the Poconos. The Old Forge borehole discharges at a rate of about 100 cubic feet per second, uh, which is about <coughs> 65 million gallons per day into the Lackawanna River. And if you were to look at the Lackawanna River uh, on Google Maps or an aerial photo, you'd see that the upper portion of the river is pretty clean and the lower portion is bright orange as it enters into the Susquehanna River. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this transparency so that we can see the underground mine pool a lot better. There are several uh, areas where the coal veins rise to the surface, this being one of them, it's known as the Muzik Saddle and that allows companies to strip mine those areas but also creates basins um, of the underground mines and allows only a portion of the water then to come over and get to the surface here at the old forge borehole so as we move down the wyoming valley into the wyoming valley you start to see these uh, yellow lines which are uh, mine barrier pillars which stop water from moving f uh, through one mine to another. That was put in place so that uh, mining companies, if one were to shut down, that uh, another mining company next to it would still be able to operate. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. Um, as you also see, there's uh, more discharges that pop up um, as we go down through the, the Duryea Breach, the Butler Water Tunnel. Um, we're moving into the Wyoming Basin now and you start to see other discharges, the Plainsville Outlet. Um, I'm just going to move down here a little bit further so that we can take a look at one of the larger discharges in the Wyoming Valley, Solomon's Creek Boreholes. And then as we continue to go down, I'm just going to zoom out so you can see kind of the vastness of this mine pool complex, the northern uh, anthracite coal field. Uh, all combined, this area contains about 435 billion gallons of water, which is a little bit more than Cayuga Lake, which is the third largest uh, finger lake in the uh, upstate New York region. Okay, I'm gonna quickly zoom into an area I've just re recently cropped um, to be able to show you the actual coal veins themselves, the cross-section area. And AppCamera has painstakingly um, traced each one of these veins to show you exactly the thickness underneath the ground. Um, so the depth of this basin is approximately uh, negative 800 feet, and the top of it is approximately positive 500 in mean sea elevation. So that is a approximately 1,300 feet of standing water. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on that topo again so that you can see where we are. We're in now in the Wilkes-Barre area. And underneath the river, the Susquehanna River, into Wilkes-Barre.